On the other end of the unknown regions, ships belonging to what once was Starfleet set down upon a war-ravaged world covered in a never-ending swamp. In the muck and bogs of the swamp, Outer Republic research teams notice ruins of a once powerful civilization. They're getting closer. Going ever deeper into the swamp, the ruins get larger and denser. The local wildlife is dangerous, but it's nothing the team can't handle. But then, in the middle of the ruins, as if it was a nexus of the planet, the team finds it. They find what they've been searching for 33 years for. They find the base of a spire. The spire of the Eternal Empire. The spire of Zakul. In the earliest days of being discovered by the wider galaxy, some of the first adopters of the galaxy's technology were militaries and scientific institutes. As the military adapted to the new tech, scientists began uncovering the last secrets of planet Earth. But they found something, something they would have never expected. One of the mysteries that still remained on Earth were her oceans. With new scanning technology, the scientists uncovered something buried deep below Mariana's Trench, an ancient starship of sorts. The vessel was missing most of its parts, but in a sealed room, one could only describe as a bridge, they found information that would set in motion the creation of Starfleet, as well as pose questions on the existence of humanity on Earth. The information was limited, but the desire for more was great. The plans were set in motion to create Starfleet, whose official goal was to boldly go where no man had gone before. But in secret, it was to uncover more information on the mysterious vessel and its origin. It would take time to organize and train crews for missions. But in that time, scientists didn't remain idle. There were more scans all across the planet with the hopes of finding more parts. Some were found in the Americas and Europe, but the largest portion, rivaling the part in Mariana's Trench, was found in the western part of the Mediterranean, buried deep below sand and rock. Further scans, as well as surveys, revealed that the crash coincided with cataclysmic flooding in the area. However, while trying to find more parts to the vessel, researchers found something even more startling, residing deep within the desert dunes of the Sahara. Underneath the sand and solid ground, archaeological teams uncovered a mostly intact starship, quite different to the one they found earlier. Despite the engines being destroyed, most of the vessel was intact, and, like the other ship, they found information that helped answer many of the questions scientists have had since the discovery of the wider galaxy. Accessing the historical records of the Republic, researchers quickly, or as quickly as they could, uncovered that the second ship matches the model of Sith vessels used during the Great Hyperspace War 5,000 years ago. While fleeing Korriban, many Sith vessels were lost to time. Some were said to have crash-landed on distant worlds and created lost tribes of Sith. In essence, this was the case on Earth. The ship was damaged from battle, and the hyperspace jump destroyed the vessel's engines. The Sith Overlord was killed in the crash, but slaves as well as civilians entered escape pods and dispersed themselves all over the planet. The survivors struck out on their own. Some tried to emulate the culture of their masters, others attempted to create something new. With one mystery solved and several questions answered, the last mystery consumed the curiosity of many researchers across Earth. A partial coordinate was uncovered off of the parts in Mariana's Trench, but it wasn't enough. For 33 years, Starfleet would survey and explore the unknown regions with the hope of finding their prize, and for 33 years, it would elude them. But in the midst of the Galactic Civil War, when the hope for finding answers was all but gone, they found the world of Zakul. Using information from the ship, the researchers digged deep beneath the base of the destroyed spire and found an underground complex from a different time. They tripped the automatic defenses, but the lack of power to the facility made it a simple task to bypass. Within what the team assumes is, or was, the control room. They found tubes that could hold an average human, as well as several machines the team theorizes were meant for genetically modifying embryos. In the heart of the room, they found a lone console that still had power going to it. This console contained a message, a message meant for the team. They learned that 4,000 years ago, 
A man named Valkorion conquered and united the people of Zakul. He was a cruel, evil man whose actions may have been pragmatic, but his heart was one of pure evil. The owners of the complex were amongst the last holdouts against him, some of the last to resist his rule. They knew the war was lost. They knew that they would never win against Valkorion and his force-using followers. In a desperate bid to give the people of Zakul a chance at freedom, the Precursors, as the researchers called them, developed a ship as well as a plan. They put all of their faith in this plan as well as their new creation. Through the constant conflict against force wielders, the Precursors learned that the mental effect of the force could be subverted by modifying the physiology of a species. Beyond this, they learned how to manipulate midi-chlorians to bolster the mental resistance of a species with the trade-off that they themselves would never be able to use the force. This process took decades to discover, but the changing of physiology was realized early on. If two species are fundamentally different, mentally and physically, it is hard for a force wielder to influence someone with a mind trick. The human researchers noted that this is why huts and toydarians are resistant to mind tricks. However, the message on the console never explained how they came upon the ability to manipulate midichlorians. As the researchers listened to the messages, everything started to click into place. They understood why they could not use the Force, and beyond that, they learned why the ship came to Earth. The Precursors sent their lone vessel into space. Inside were thousands of cryotubes filled with embryos and fully grown Force-resistant humans. The Ark was sent deep into space, in the direction of the heart of the old infinite empire of the Rakata, with the hopes that the dark presence that emanates from the remains of the dead empire would mask the Precursor's children. The vessel could barely handle the journey and was ripped into two pieces as it fell to Earth. Much like the ship from the Sith, the Precursor vessel launched pods filled with cryotubes all over the planet, giving the children room to breathe. The Precursor leader knew that this was a desperate gamble, but if Valkorion was to be defeated, then these Terrans, as he called them, would be their best chance of victory. Someday. He knew that without guidance, they would fight amongst themselves. They would make the mistake of Zakul. But perhaps, without the power of the Force looming over them, they will have a chance to grow. A chance to avoid the religious dogma and power-crazed individuals that came with the Force. The two groups of humans assimilated into one another, producing the Terrans that now reside on Earth. At first, there were conflicts in certain parts of the world, while in other parts, life went on as normal. But eventually, the two human races became one. A few researchers chuckled as they commented on that they at least knew why they looked like the wider galaxy humans, but it still didn't explain why English was Galactic Basic. All of this information startled the researchers. Some didn't want to believe it, others didn't know if they could, but they all knew that the people deserved to know. With the information in hand, they returned to the Outer Republic and published their findings, recording and all to the Outer Republic Colonnet. The news spread like wildfire all across the Outer Republic and on the battlefields of the Galactic Civil War. Some of the longest standing questions in their history finally had answers. Why were we here? What is the meaning of life? And then silently, all across the species, it clicked. From the soldiers fighting on foreign worlds to the workers at the factories on Earth, they understood. They were created to stop a madman consumed by the dark side they are the survivors of genocide. They are the children of the Sith, and they are a weapon created to fight it. This war was their birthright. Valkorion may be gone, but this war was what they were bred for. Whether the Precursors knew it or not, whether the fleeing Sith Lord knew it or not. With this information shared, the Terrans of Earth now fought with a renewed vigor, a ferocity the likes of which the galaxy hadn't seen in a thousand years. The Terrans had a reason to fight, not because the Precursors preordained it, no. They fight to right the wrongs of the Sith, the wrongs done to them and the rest of the galaxy. They fight a tyrant who represents everything wrong with the Force, everything wrong with power. They fight to make the sacrifices of so many, including their ancestors, worth something. They fight for a purpose. They fight for hope. For every colony under siege and lost, for every world liberated from the Empire, for every slave freed, for every soldier killed, the Terrans fight. The Terrans will never feel the Force. They will never use it. 
They are the embodiment of the common person, and they will defend them until their dying day from either the forces of the light or the dark.